Howdy folks, Timber Drifter here. Out walking around. Came back to visit the uh, pile of TVs I showed in another video. In our little junkyard here. It has grown a bit. And I found a piece of uh, what is to me alien technology. We're talking pre-digital here folks. I'm not sure I even know how to operate this. It's an old Zenith TV. Now this thing has style. We had one like this when I was a kid, but it was much larger. And it was digital. I know the light's not great, but there it is. It's got these extendable antennas on it. That's, that's pretty amazing to me in and of itself. Those things are about five foot long. Move all around. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, the controls are not digital. Let's see if I can get in here and show you this. There's something called chroma color or chromatic. It says, says chroma color down here. Solid state chroma color 2. And then chromatic on this button here. And when you push this button, it turns orange. And it's not a light or anything. On and off button doesn't do that. But look at the dials here. Now, I've seen dials, but they just had numbers, you know, around the dial. And the thing moved. A little indicator. This one, actually, there's a little number in there that, that really changes. UHF. Wow. I don't know if this is picking that up or not. But see how many channels this baby will pick up. 83. That's it. That's a lot. Wow. Anyway, alien technology to me. But I'll tell you what, folks. This TV has style. It's got this plastic wood, these little artsy bits here and there, and the, the top is paperboard. I would watch that TV. I would love to know what uh, chroma color was. And then below it, of course, is a one of these giant, ugly, flat monstrosities, and then a big, boxy one there. And just a big pile of black plastic and glass. Yeah. Pretty neat looking old TV though. There was one back here last year that had a, a record player in the top of it. And a, it was all broken up, but I could tell what it had looked like. It was uh, actual wood, it wasn't particle board big wooden case with a TV on one side and the top opened up and there was a record player in there. So anyway, I am smoking some McClelland Honeydew. This is uh, tobacco that I bought years ago, probably in 2005, and put it in a jar and forgot about it. Okay, out of the sun. So, let me light up again here. So it's inter interesting to see what um, roughly nine years in a jar does to different kinds of tobaccos. 
This still has a hint of the flavor that it had when it was new. And I really enjoyed that flavor, it just I couldn't keep it from burning my tongue. I didn't want to throw it away, so I put it in a jar. I didn't really know what I was doing back then, as far as cellaring. But, anyway, it doesn't burn now like it did before, but it just doesn't quite have as much flavor. Of course, it wasn't always stored in a cool, dry place. Sometimes it was just in a storage unit, but it was always sealed in the glass jar. I'd like to, I don't know if they still make this or not. I know it was part of the uh, 221B series, the Sherlock Holmes, Sherlock Holmes tobaccos. Smoking it in the old Peterson. There's a little bit of a uh, Graham cracker and molasses. Kind of what it tastes like. Virginia tobacco and graham cracker and molasses. That's what I'm getting out of it anyway. What a beautiful thistle. Big plant. I'm six foot. Plant's a bit taller than I am. Lovely thistle though. I think I might cut and dry some of these. I don't see them that big very often. Anyway, just out wandering around. I think I'll see if they make this, see if I can get another 10 of it. it would be... See, back, back when I was smoking this before in 2005, I didn't really know how to handle flakes, and this is a, it's a broken flake. I didn't know how to pack them. Uh, I was only used to dealing with rubbed out tobacco, so that's probably part of the reason I was having tongue bite, was because I was having to puff too hard on it. It was just simply getting too hot. So now that I've been an experienced flake smoker for years, and uh, especially broken flakes, like one of the tobaccos that I smoke most often is uh, McBaron Mixture Scottish Blend. And sometimes it's, every once in a while I'll get a 10 that seems like it's completely rubbed out, but most of the time it's a broken flake. Watching a squirrel run across the rooftop over there. Anyway, how many minutes is that? Nine. All right, take care.